Okay, so welcome to community call number 14. Glad to have you guys all here. Uh, we try to run this call monthly in case you're new to the call. And it's really just an opportunity for us to share what's new at Superfluid, some updates that we might be working on, the overall roadmap, and also to have an opportunity to chat with you guys directly. So to find out about what projects you're working on, to answer any of your questions, and to have just more of an open forum and dialogue about what you think about Superfluid and um, you know, any questions or feelings you might have about the protocol. So looking at the agenda today, we're gonna to start off with a little talk about automated recurring invoice payments in Web3 with Superfluid and Request, something that we're hugely excited about. And so we'll have the Request team talk a little bit about that uh, recent news. Next, we're gonna have Mark uh, from DGen Dogs Club, provide a little update on the project he's working on, on DGen Dogs. Then we're going to have Joshua uh, talk about some native super token explorations that he's doing. So some really cool stuff. And then last, we're going to open up for just an open brainstorming session. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some ideas that we've had lately uh, for Superfluid. And then last, of course, we're going to open up for Q&A. Uh, you know, you can talk about your projects, any questions that you might have, and things like that. So, with that said, I can pass it off to request um, if the team over there is ready to to present. Yeah, hi everyone. Thank you. Um, I'm just talking over the mic like a, a few minutes, uh, just as an intro. Um, we've been working like. Uh, with the Superfluid team uh, over the last few weeks or months uh, on a discussion about how could a uh, payment stream could uh, be a revolution uh, in, as a payment method and uh, what would be the ideal use case for that. And uh, there is like, we've seen like a lot of traction uh, on Superfluid side, we've seen a lot of traction uh, last year on the request side. And uh, we discussed together, especially like uh, at uh, Ether Lisbon and um, discussing about uh, collaborating and met making like uh, our uh, combined uh, values, an additional value for Web3. And uh, Today, uh, what's interesting is uh, regarding like invoicing and payments. Uh, request is brings like a, a structure uh, Lego brick to the industry, providing like an invoicing and uh, payment module for B two B purpose and uh, contractors and freelancers. And Superfluid was bringing like another part of the Lego, which is like the payment streaming. And uh, we've seen mutual uh, users uh, of both protocols, like talking to each other, saying like, why don't you guys combine the value? So today when you have like, uh, imagine you are like a CFO in the industry, you have like a, a bunch or a DAO, and you have like a bunch of contractors or vendors to pay at the end of the month, you have few choices. Either uh, you do the old fashioned way, like the 2018 way, like copy pasting like an Ethereum address uh, 100 times um, uh, a day, waiting for the transaction to broadcast, uh, pay the gas at every second, at every payment, and, uh, and take uh, a lot of time to do it. The second time is streamlining this a bit by one click payment using request. So that's like already like an evolution. Uh, you select them all, uh, you batch payment together with Gnosis Safe. Uh, it works really well. And then you have like an extra level of automation that comes uh, when we talk about like uh, subscriptions, uh, DAO uh, payments. So you don't have necessarily someone uh, behind the DAO making manual payment each month, either, even if they are batched or not, uh, there is not necessarily a person. And that's like a real use case where like uh, payment streaming uh, from Superfluid is uh, essential. Uh, 
the person in charge of the DAO gets like an inbound invoice uh, at the beginning, which enable to open the stream. And then the person is getting paid by the DAO or by the organization, whatever the organization type, but the person gets paid over time. And the beauty of partnering with us is more than being streamed uh, at every X, every second, every minute. On top of that, you have at the end of the month, uh, the summary of the money that have been streamed to you. Uh, embedded in a nice, uh, beautiful invoice that is uh, hosted in your dashboard. And at the moment of you stop, if one day you ask to stop the stream or if the, the person is leaving the organization, at the moment when the stream stops, uh, you have also like a settlement uh, invoice that is summarizing like the the students have been previously sent to that person. So together uh, with request and superfluid, you have both the payment automation when there is no, uh, not a physical person uh, doing the payment especially. And you have like the documentation of every single payment stream uh, in the proper, I would say compliant way, or at least as compliant as we can make. Uh, to document properly like those blockchain-based transactions for both the organization and the person who is paid. I don't know if, uh, Mike, uh, you want to add anything on top of that? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, um, the announcement went out yesterday um, that we are working together to streamline, uh, you know, automated recurring voice payments um, together with the request network and request finance as well. So we are super excited to work with you guys. Um, this is something that has been going on for a while. It's been going on for a few months now. Um, Bertrand on the call has also been helpful in putting this together and many other team members here. Um, I wanted to say, Christoph, that many here um, have already tried requests because uh, they won some of our Akaton prizes. I think we have Mark and Joshua here, for example, the team. Um, and they got to invoice us via request. Um, so they already tried it out. And um, you know, if we were ever to stream uh, to some new contractor, it would be just amazing for uh, maybe me and Jade in the team on the admin side of things to not have to worry about producing custom invoices all the time. So at the moment uh, we are streaming to some team members and um, that's kind of annoying because we have to ask these team members to send us a custom invoice with a new amount every month because I don't know, the number of days in a month changes from from January to February. And so the, the invoice amount is different. So we have to make the calculation by hand and then ask them to send that the invoice updated. Um, and it was just, you know, it would be magical if we could just automate the whole process. So we just can't wait ourselves for this to be live. And it will simplify the lives of uh, quite a many, peop many people in Web3, I would say. Um, and I think it touches across uh, a bunch of use cases that are very much needed for the DAO tooling uh, world for 2022. So again, we can't be more excited. Now it's about making it happen. Um, so you know, let us know if we have any technical challenges. Uh, we'll try to knock down a few walls uh, if we encounter them. And then hopefully we will try to drive this to adoption as much as we can. Um, I was wondering maybe guys, did you have a good response on the early, get early access form uh, that you published yesterday or is it pretty slow? Yeah, no, we got like uh, already like a few uh, subscriptions to it. I don't have the exact number. Uh, Sean is not in the call here, but that's fine. Uh, uh, I don't have the exact number, but uh, I know that we we've got already like uh, some like uh, uh, interest for the for the solution. So that's really good. Yeah, so as you can see on the poll that we launched just before, um, you know, 51% um, of the attendees on the call said that he wanted to try it. So that's a pretty good result. And another 42% said that they might want to try, just they need to learn a little bit more about it. So that's about 90% of the attendees that want to give it a shot. Yeah, and um, yeah, and that's perfect. And even for the, some like, uh, 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 let's say some, uh, industry employee and contractors are like uh, uh, freaking a bit about like uh, security and privacy uh, when uh, when we talk about like uh, invoicing and payments. 
And uh, some people, uh, I just wanted to add that any invoice can be like uh, anonymous and generated from like any uh, random address. Uh, if it's on the contractor side, um, the paid via a payment stream to like uh, a totally like a private and anonymous address. Uh, I know it's important for some people in the industry. And uh, what's important is that the payer organization, so Superfluid or Request or any foundation of the industry, we have to have a proper paper trail if we want to be able to scale and do the things right uh, for the future. So we, the, the idea of mutualizing both the payment stream and documenting uh, a transaction uh, even with a lot of privacy and anonymity, I would say the idea is to have like proper documents for the payer organization because we get audited, uh, we have to have an accounting, uh, we have to maintain uh, bookkeeping and so on and so on. Whatever payments, uh, the payment is streamed or paid in one shot, everything needs to be documented and that's one condition for uh, Web3 organization to scale and become legit to the eyes of the world, I would say. Absolutely. Um, normally we do run Q&A at the end of the community call, but I know that Christoph might need to run in a while. So maybe we can have a two minutes Q&A quickly now, and then I think some other team member from Request is gonna stick around for the later on Q&A. So if you have a couple of questions, maybe one minute each, we can dedicate time to them. Just open your mic and ask your question. Well, I'll just ask Christoph really quick. How you doing? My name is uh, Darnell. I'm with Creative. Uh, we work with uh, Superfluid on some of our projects. Um, my question is, how soon uh, will you be able to transition to onboarding with some of the partner down? Uh, so we did. So I cannot commit. Uh, on behalf of my dev team because like uh, they would like hate me if I was doing so. Uh, but what I can tell you is like we're pretty well advanced. Uh, we've been talking about like Q1 release, but I cannot guarantee any uh, timeline yet because I'm not the one like, uh, I see Bertrand is smiling here. I'm not the one like uh, coding with uh, magic fingers. Uh, but like we are pretty advanced and I think uh, we could even onboard uh, some beta testers in the coming uh, days or weeks. We don't have to end to okay. wait for the end of Q1. Uh, if okay. you have like any intention to be a beta tester, uh, you can contact me or Mike or whoever from uh, any team and uh, we can uh, start working on it. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Any other question? I think we can take one more. All good though. Sounds good. Great. Thanks yep. a lot, Christoph. Um, it's great to have you. Uh, let's keep it spinning and hopefully ship it soon. We can't wait to announce that it's live and up and running on uh, Request yep. Finance. So let's keep us updated. Um, maybe if you have any news, um, let us know so we can post it on our Discord and so the community will know and be able to try it out. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks, Christoph. Bye-bye. All right. Um, um, now we can move on to. Now we can move on to Mark, DJ and Dogs Club. So, Mark, if you're ready, uh, I'd love to have you present. Sure. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Mark Carey, uh, and uh, one of my projects is DJ and Dogs. It's uh, NFTs that stream DeFi tokens. Uh, you have to excuse my voice a little bit. I seem to have a tad bit of COVID right now, but uh, I'm doing okay, uh, apart from my voice and a bit of a <clears throat> the odd cough. But um, so what I'm going to do here is I updated the presentation that some of you might have seen before. Uh, so I'm going to show that because uh, the UI itself has to change. Before I do, I'm just going to send some links into the chat in case I forget to do that later. Uh, so I'll share my screen and go through the presentation that 
talks about it and includes a lot of the changes. Just oh. All right. Uh, sorry, this is a, I got my new MacBook <laughs> and I have to give the permissions to share the screen and stuff. I should have done this before. I should have thought of it. Uh, uh, it's going to take. Uh, screen recording. I'm gonna have to rejoin the meeting, unfortunately. All right, we'll just wait for Mark really quickly. Who else has got COVID? I actually think I got it uh, two weeks ago. My girlfriend had it, so I think uh, I probably had it. So, but I'm, I'm good now though. We, we recovered, we're doing well. I had COVID too. Mm -hmm. You know, no symptoms, but still positive. This is like COVID anonymous. Yeah. COVID. <laughs> <laughs> sure. yeah, I hope you guys are wearing your masks in these Zoom calls, all right? <laughs> I, I, I haven't been in such a crowded place for a long time, you know? Sorry, Mark. Uh, okay, I think I'm on. in business here. Uh, if I can just find the right window. Uh, maybe it just, this should be it. You guys see that? Perfect. Okay, great. Okay, so here are the key elements of DJ and dogs. Uh, one dog, one NFT is minted at a time. They're not uh, dropped all at once. Uh, it, eventually, these are probably going to be one auction per day it might start uh, a little bit faster than that uh, that's one of the remaining to do's to figure out the early cadence um, but they're going to be sold at auction and the proceeds are going to go to the treasury and the treasury invests in DeFi, and yield earning tokens are streamed back to the nft holders so once an auction is settled uh, the auctions are going to be in wrapped eth uh, and it's going to trigger the following. So that's going to get deposited into idle finance where they start to earn yield. And that's using the idle finance um, best yield strategy, which sort of compounds the Matic rewards into, into the yield. And so those get streamed back to the dog owners. So here's the distribution, uh, which is a little different than it was for the hackathon. Uh, and it sort of follows the, the notion of 50% for the past, 50% for the future. I think that's something that ENS did with their airdrop that I thought made a lot of sense. So the way that breaks down is that 50% uh, of the auction proceeds stream back to the past dog owners and those streams start immediately. 10% uh, is immediately donated to a charitable DAO. That's for the, you know, for a better future. <laughs> and the remaining 40% goes to the treasury. With where it is controlled by a DAO. Uh, the DAO and governance aspects are new uh, compared to the initial hackathon. Um, so the streamonomics have updated. The 50% breaks down as follows. 10% of the auction proceeds start streaming back to the owner of the previous dog. Uh, in the initial hackathon, it was the current dog, but it's shifted slightly, one dog into the past. Uh, and then 30% of the auction proceeds get shared among 20 previous dog owners. But this is stepped. It's a little more compl uh, complex, but instead of like the immediate previous 20, it's the dog before, and then the dog five before that, and then the dog five before that, and the dog five before that, going back to 100 dogs prior to the dog that was minted. So the idea here is that it covers quite a bit of the past so that, you know, if you're, you know, 
you know, you're there, you, you get a dog and then the hundred dogs in the future, you're still uh, going to get a new share of the stream. So uh, you still have that direct incentive. And then finally, the 10% of the proceeds stream back to the, the dog 10 before. Um, so, sorry, there's a typo here. It still says 20%, uh, but it should be 10% of dog 10 proceeds get streamed to the owner of dog zero and, and so on. Um, so you have that incentive that, you know, the dog that gets auctioned 10 dogs after yours, you know, if you, you want that one to, <laughs> to, to auction for a high price as you have a stake in that. Um, so all streams, of course, are sent using superfluid with the wall of balance is constantly updating. And when the dog ownership changes, the streams get redirected automatically to the new owner. So the main reason for streaming the yield to the previously minted dogs is to provide this a direct incentive for dog owners to participate in the community and ensure the success of future auctions. Uh, so I'm really interested in how a direct incentive like this can impact the community and you know promotion of the project and future auctions uh i mean there's always an incentive with nft projects to you know keep pushing the floor price up uh, but this is a little different than it's and there's an actually a direct and not just an indirect incentive so i think that's interesting this is an old old uh, graphic i haven't updated this one yet so things will look a little bit different with the new streamonomics one thing to note that I've done with the streamonomics is it's sort of been generalized in the contract. So it can be changed uh, as things progress or the, the DAO could decide to change the streamonomics or add an, another streamonomics rule on top of the three, it can be replaced. So I think that's could be an interesting thing if, if there was a reason to change it uh, one way or the other, uh, that can be done now instead of being sort of hard-coded into the contract as it was with the hackathon uh, one. Dog biscuits uh, are ERC-20 tokens that, uh, that get granted to all auction bidders, even if you're not the winning bid. So this was kind of a late addition to the whole thing that I think I just added last week. Um, and it, my thinking was just that, you know, the community is larger than just the winners of these auctions. So I wanted to find a way to sort of give something to auction participants that don't win. Um, so the utility and value of these tokens is uh, to be determined, but I'd like to see a scenario where uh, there is either utility or value or both um, to the dog biscuits. Um, so I think it could be interesting, but I haven't really taken it beyond that at this point. Here's an overview of the contracts and how things fit together now. Uh, so there's two core contracts, uh, the auction house contract and the DJ and dogs contract. Uh, these were both present in the hackathon project. The rest are sort of new. Uh, the dog biscuits I just talked about. So that sort of gets tied to the auction house because it, it, it checks the, the bids and issues or tr triggers the, the minting of the dog biscuits to each each uh, based on each bid. The DJ and dogs is where the NFT is sort of are minted from. Uh, all the streaming functions, super fluid functions have been removed from the DJ and dogs contract. Uh, and now DJ and dogs interacts with a token vesting contract, which is another project of mine, which uh, could also be used by teams who want to uh, vest tokens to contributors. But it can also be used by contracts like DGen dogs to manage the stream. So that's what DGen dogs does. Now it passes those streams over to token vesting. Whoops, oh, I went back. There we go. And what's going on? There we go. Uh, and then the streams actually happen from there. And other pieces here are they mentioned the governance and treasury contracts have been added. Uh, and there's the charitable DAO donations that happen. And that DAOIT is another one of my projects that makes DAO creation easy. Uh, so the DAOIT factory is used to create the charitable DAO. Uh, and more details will be 
uh, sort of released soon on that. But uh, I wanted to, you know, include a charitable component to this. And I think it's something that a lot of NFT projects uh, should, should do. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense um, to sort of give back. And so that's an element that I want to include for the launch. So that kind of covers all the contracts that are involved here. Um, for the governance, there's actually at least two contracts in, in as part of that or more, but I don't want to complicate this even more than it is here. So that's the layout there. Uh, what do we got? These are links that I posted into the chat for the Zoom. So if you want to follow any of these, including the DGen Dogs Club URL um, and my Twitter or the DGen Dogs Twitter and the Discord link. Uh, next steps are refinements to the UI. Like if you follow that link to the DGen Dogs Club, it hasn't really updated since the hackathon. So I have to make some changes there. Um, not too many, uh, but I need to make some changes there. Uh, it still lacks uh, an element of compensation uh, for the team. Uh, I know Nouns DAO has a, a mechanism that I may explore for that. Uh, DGen Dogs is partially inspired by, by Nouns. Uh, more testing, definitely needs more testing. And then eventually, hopefully very soon, a Polygon launch. Um, so those are the main things that are left to go. And uh, I appreciate any feedback uh, that anybody has uh, as things get pretty close. So if there are changes that I should make, <laughs> now's the time to let me know. <laughs> awesome, Mark. Um, thanks so much for, sh for sharing. I think it's, I think all of us at Superfluid just love the, the project. We love DJ and dogs. Just a quick uh, poll that we had shared there. Um, do you want to own a DGen dog NFT? So we had 76% overwhelmingly say yes, totally. So you have a, a lot of people interested and 20% maybe. So um, yeah, maybe people just need to learn a little bit more about how the project actually works. But uh, yeah, I think that was a really good overview. And uh, I'd love to open up for some questions or feedback. I know that uh, Fran had a question, I think, where do I buy a dog, Mark, was his question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, the place is going to be at, at djndogs.club uh, when the time comes, and hopefully that's going to be soon. Uh, but and it's going to be on a Polygon Polygon network. Awesome. Does anyone else have any feedback or any questions they might have for Mark before we move on? Uh, I think a few of us raised our hand. Yeah, Didi um, raised his hand, so let's let's let him go first. Yeah. <laughs> My question is, are the streamonomics, uh, cool word by the way, uh, are they Sibir resistant? So um, what if the owner just um, sends it to himself or herself repeatedly to different addresses? Is there protection against that? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite, didn't quite hear the question. So the previous, let's say 30 owners, that's 30 addresses, but could, uh, could be the same person behind. Is there this incentive to do that? Uh, no, I mean, it's uh, it's based on the holder of the NFT at that moment, and whoever the holder of that NFT is. So if somebody owns more than one NFT, then, you know, then they get the share for that NFT. So if you own five dogs, then you'll get the streams that are associated with those five dogs. The key thing is that the streams stay with the nft so if the nft changes hands the streams immediately start going to the new owner okay i guess i will need to study the, the details when, when they're published so my question is more on the gas costs like if there's 11 streams attached to the nft when you try and transfer it it's gonna probably cost a lot of money. Um, I guess on Polygon, it's probably all right, but it might still go up to a dollar. So just something to think about. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, I haven't, uh, you know, done any checks on exactly what that would be. But yeah, I mean, uh, some of these are going to be compared to other transactions. Uh, 
the gas costs will be higher, but hopefully, uh, you know, even if you pay a dollar, hopefully the dogs are worth enough that that's, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, if it's to get a dog, I mean, mm -hmm. it's priceless, right? Anyone else? Uh, yeah, so you mentioned the, um, the dog biscuits token is going to be an ERC-20, uh, but how open would you be to making that a native super token? Maybe we could like stream biscuits? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely a possibility. Uh, I've played around with some native tokens in, in another project of mine. Uh, the other option is, of course, to, to, to wrap, wrap the dog biscuits into a super token. Um, one of the features of the ERC-20 token is the uh, ERC-20 voting aspect. So while biscuit owners are not necessarily part of the, the, the DAO for the dogs, which is based on the NFT tokens, there potentially could be a separate uh, governance for biscuit. Um, now I ran into, with another project, I ran into some challenges trying to get the ERC-20 voting working with a custom super token and I ended up doing the wrap wrapped version instead so depending on what happens with it I guess there's more flexibility this way but yeah I mean being able to stream the biscuits could be an interesting you know twist on it at some point yeah yeah Mark uh, how else am I going to get my entire salary in biscuits if I can't stream it <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> using requests to get biscuits yeah, super that, biscuits you will just connect it all connect it all request invoice biscuit tokens that's right awesome um well if no one has any further questions uh for mark here we can move on to the venerable joshua to uh talk a little bit about some native super token exploration he's been doing yeah so um I guess just kind of giving giving a quick overview uh, for people that may not be familiar with you know the, the full ecosystem. So there's two two kinds of super tokens uh, in the Superfluid protocol. You have um, a super token that has some sort of underlying ERC twenty token. So um, like Super USDC, for example, it's not a native super token. It's a wrapper on top of USDC, right? And then there are some that are native super tokens like Ricochet, where there's no upgrading, downgrading. You have to worry about any of that. It's fully compatible with everything ERC-20 and then some. So it's, it's really, really cool stuff there. Um, a little bit of a limitation on this though right now is uh, Superfluid provides us with two scripts for deploying um, super tokens, right? One is the native, one is the um, token with an underlying underlying asset. The, the problem with native super tokens right now is there's only one minting policy, um, at least that I've seen in the wild, is you mint the entire supply up front and then everything else, you kind of figure it out, right? So that entire supply is minted to a single address. And you know, maybe this could be a DAO treasury and, and you know, maybe it could be just a number of things. But um, well, what I've found is that through, through this wild web of proxy patterns and all this kind of stuff, you can actually still access these mint and burn functions. Um, so I'm going to share my screen real quick. All right, can you guys see my screen okay? Yeah. Cool, you gotta get all this zoom clutter out of the way all right cool so um basically what i've done here is is pretty similar to how um opens up one has like the the base erc20 and then they have extensions of that erc20 um, this is kind of something that i've been working on as well so here this looks pretty similar to what superfluid's done uh, in terms of like this this base super token contract um and then there's there's a couple things like storage paddings and proxy stuff that goes into this but this is just kind of like a bare bones base super token. Uh, but then we also have special functions in here, like you know the internal burn and mint functions. And this is just kind of designed to be like a really thin wrapper on top of what super tokens can do, uh, just as a way to directly access this, right? So if, if I import or, or inherit this contract, then instead of having to do all this casting and all this other kind of stuff, all I have to do is just call a little internal uh, mint or burn function. Um, so as, as like a quick example, uh, I made one, it's called CAP Super Token. So it's a super token, uh, it's a native super token. And basically just whoever the mentor is can just mint uh, these tokens up to a certain maximum supply, right? And we can see whenever we wanna call mint here, 
right? We do we do our checks, you know, make sure only the mentor, make sure the supply isn't capped, and we can literally just call it just like this, right? So it makes it a lot simpler, and it, and it makes it a lot more relatable if you've ever, um, you know, used like Open Zeppelin's implementations, right? So uh, this is something I've kind of been working on. Uh, we're also working on uh, what I'm calling a multi mint token, and the idea is instead of minting to just a, a single address, right? So like what right now, like whenever you mint the total supply, you're minting it to one address and just kind of hoping that that address is uh, either a trusted person or, you know, a, some sort of contract, right? But what we can do with multi-mint is we can actually create an IDA. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's just a really easy way to distribute tokens to a bunch of addresses. But what we can do with this is whenever we mint, we can directly mint those new tokens to a distribution. So now you can mint to an arbitrary number of addresses at a time. Uh, right now, this is on GitHub. I'll share the link uh, probably in Discord, or, or I can probably pull it up here in a second. But um, I, I'm thinking the, the best outcome for this is going to be, um, you know, like an NPM package or something like that, where you can just import this. And like I said, it uses all, all of Super Token's logic. It's just a very small, you know, thin wrapper on top of that, which uh, if we're going to be doing Super Biscuits, let me know. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, does anyone have any questions for, for Joshua there? Yeah, Joshua, definitely uh, great work. So definitely want to involve you in the future. Like uh, we have a uh, idea of creating this customizable uh, um, token creation uh, interface that opens up. We actually have a, I can't remember the service name, but uh, you can customize a contract and then you can mint your own token. Right? We, want, we want something like that. Actually, uh, you probably didn't know that I should share with you. Uh, we have a classification of how to call a um, super token, right? Uh, so is it listed or unlisted? Is it governed, governed by super token logic, uh, by, by the governance, the logic itself, and uh, the custom types such as mintable, pre-minted, pausable, capped, all this kind of thing, right? We have a, a version of the most hideous name I've sent to the chat. This our the most artificial name. So if you can create a custom token with all the properties, so that would be the, 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 the official name of it. Uh, we have a classification system, should share with you someday. All right, thank, thanks for the work. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, I, yeah, like, like I said, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, playing around with this a little bit more. I mean, I'm just kind of cracking the DaVinci code on this one. It's, it's kind of weird figuring out, you know, how, how all this kind of stuff works and, um, yeah, like I said, I'm excited to, to mess around with this a little bit more. If anybody's planning on launching any native super tokens, feel free to reach out. I'm basically always in the Superfluid Discord, um, and I'd love to work with you guys on, on that kind of thing. And, and yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about, you know, some of, these, uh, some of these specific things. I'd love to see an interface where you could just, you know, like from, from a UI, deploy your own super token with some, with some logic like that in there. Awesome. Any uh, other further comments before we move it on to the open brainstorming session? Oops. Joshua, just really cool stuff. Uh, so amazing to see you kind of learn uh, so much about superfluids and seeing kind of how you've, uh, you know, become so proficient in solidity as well as uh, is really inspiring. So good job. Thank you. And uh, it's amazing also to see we have 100 participants. I think we, it's the first time we break the free figure on a community call. So uh, great to see the community grow and, uh, you know, so many new people join in. Fran, if I can make a quick comment on that. Uh, probably your Zoom license is blocking it at 100. Uh, if it's uh, the usual license, it caps at 100. You could set up a YouTube stream so anyone could at least uh, attend in the future. Thanks, thanks. I, yeah, as I said, we've never hit a hundred, so <laughs> we didn't know it's that. It's a good uh, uh, problem yeah. to have. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for that. And actually, Saskar, I don't think we've seen you before. Uh, thanks for joining as well. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome guys. Well, uh, yeah, we're excited to have so many people on the call today. Um, I think that is a uh, perfect lead in into kind of an open brainstorming session we wanted to have. Um, so we've had really packed agendas lately on the calls. We wanted to have some more back and forth, some more discussion about um, maybe some questions about Superfluid's future or some ideas you might have for it. 
um, some applications that you know we could we could use Superfluid for. Um, to kick it off, there's been some ideas that obviously we have around Superfluid and its future, and um, an application as well that we're really interested in, and that is around donations. So we've been talking a lot internally about this idea of basically having a donation initiative, um, having streaming donations. And so it's a concept we wanted to share with you guys today, just over the call and uh, kind of get a, a temperature check, see what you guys think about something like that. Um, you know, any ideas you might have around um, streaming donations. We think it could be a really huge, a really cool idea. I know that there are some, um, some projects that have kind of try to dip their toes into that idea. But uh, I think that there's a lot of potential that we could have with streaming donations. Um, I think we could get a lot of people involved uh, into, into donating because maybe a, a lump sum is, is just too much of an immediate loss for people. But if they can stream a dollar over um, the course of a month or something like that, uh, I think there's some really unique things that can happen. So. Yeah, we just wanted to share that idea to kick off the brainstorming session with you guys. And if anyone has any follow-up or any ideas to piggyback onto that concept, feel free to, to share. Yeah, I just wanna add, I, I kind of mentioned uh, during my presentation that uh, my Dowit project, which is a project for easily creating a DAO, uh, it was primarily motivated by uh, charitable DAOs. Um, that was in the back of my mind when I was creating it. And so it includes uh, the ability to stream donations or to do lump sum donations. So that was kind of, uh, so basically I agree with your thinking. It's, I think it's huge potential to, for streaming donations, uh, especially because it, you can it can be a small amount per day or per whatever time period. And so I kind of built that in and that tool. And uh, as I said, with DGen Dogs, I'm hoping to, try to create a, uh, uh, a charitable DAO that uh, while the streaming feature might not be front and center for that particular one, uh, it's kind of built into uh, the DAO. There's sort of a, a super app that's, that's, that's part of it that accepts the streaming donations and streams back uh, voting shares. Um, so just wanted to add that. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I love that that's something that you've been thinking about with Dowit too. Um, so it's really, really cool. Um, yeah, does, any, does anyone have any other thoughts on the idea of streaming donations, whether it's you know the application itself or maybe recipients? So we've been doing some thinking about who should we stream to um, with partners, with the community as well? You know, what, what are some NGOs or some, um, organizations that uh, might be important feel free to share if you have any anything that you're passionate about or any one that you think is is well deserving of uh, kind of those streams almost it's very quiet Fitty, I don't think we can hear you, man, but uh, this is in your wheelhouse. Uh, it's getting a little bit louder. Almost could, could hear you better there. Can we should send you a mic. We, we, we need to send you a mic. <laughs> no, I, I think it's my... It's so... <laughs> Okay, so uh, on the topic of uh, of charities, uh, I have a project that I worked on in the same in Kakaton and it's called Benevolence Moon. Uh, the Benevolence Moon actually is a predictive market game that uh, we try to include a charity uh, play, play in a predictable game. And the other one is called Daily, Daily Rockets. And for Daily Rockets, people try to predict uh, the closing price of an asset for a particular day. In the moon price, we try to predict uh, the uh, time when a certain price is going to be hit. 
So in those pools, uh, we have a, a function that uh, a certain uh, a certain percentage of the total amount played on each game is uh, set aside for uh, a charitable cause, a group of uh, winners of the protocol. That is, uh, uh, every month there will be uh, around 30 people who have won on the day for a charity that uh, is going to receive the donation for that particular month. And if uh, a charity wins, it receives a uh, uh, superfluid stream uh, for that particular month, then uh, that uh, logic is changed every month according to the votes put by the winner. So I think you should also try to look it up. We have not the MVP uh, right now, and uh, we should be going to public testing in uh, about two weeks. So I think you should look it out. If you have ideas or if you might want to help, they're always open. Yeah, so for, for anyone um, who might be interested in, in what he's talking about there, I think it'd be great if you could share um, the project and perhaps some of the recipients into the chat, just because it was a little bit quiet and um, there were some technical issues, but I could kind of, I could grab bits and pieces. Um, but uh, yeah, Sam, I don't know if you have anything to add on to there. Yeah, like I said, Fiddy, we should we should get you a new microphone. Uh, but you were a little bit quiet. I think I was able to follow most of what you said. I don't know about other other folks on the call, but uh, for those of you that don't know, I mean, Benevolent, Benevolent Moon is the project he was referring to. Um, it came out of a recent hackathon. Um, Fiddy and the team have worked pretty hard on it, and and basically the the ethos behind the project. I mean, he he kind of laid out some of the specifics there, but the ethos behind the project is um, leveraging this desire to do some of the more uh, uh, degen type of things in crypto where you're, you're betting on what's going to happen in the future. You're doing lots of trading, um, leveraging that impulse to do that for fun, but also for good, right? So some of the, the proceeds generated by the protocol they're working on will go to different charitable organizations. They're going to set up a DAO to determine, you know, who those funds should go to and they're using super fluid streams to actually distribute those funds. So, you know, Benevolent Moon is not the only project we've seen doing similar things. There are additional projects working on this kind of thing as well. But I think part of the reason why we wanted to bring up this idea of streaming donations is, is that we think it's a great op opportunity um, to use superfluid streams. Um, so, yeah, any thoughts that you guys have, feel free to put them in the chat or, or throw them out there. But we're, we're thinking about this uh, pretty heavily right now. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, like you said, feel free to, to share any ideas you have about uh, streaming donations to the chat, but uh, I don't want to dominate the, the whole agenda with it now, just looking at the, the clock here. So if anyone has some kind of wild out there ideas or, you know, theoretical applications for Superfluid, feel free to, to share them now and we can, we can chat a little bit about it. Um, otherwise, we can blend this with just also general Q&A as well. Um, so yeah, if you guys have, have any questions as well, feel free to, to ask them now. I feel like I saw some questions come in earlier when Mark was talking and if you guys want to ask those again, I'm sure Mark would be happy to answer. I think it looks like somebody might have, we have some questions in the chat though. Yeah, we do. Let's see. Um, we have one here about streaming NFTs. Can it be done? I think we have an answer to that. Who wants to take it? You want me to take it? Yeah, per perhaps you or you or uh, Fran, either or. Um, so we actually have a hackathon coming up this weekend called NFT Hack that we're sponsoring. Um, and one idea that we've been uh, trying to get people to consider for the weekend is this idea of fractionalizing NFTs uh, with super tokens. Um, and I hate to put him on the spot again because he already has talked a, a fair bit today, but Joshua is also kind of thinking about working on something like that. So um, streaming the NFT itself, you know, like that's a little trickier. You know, I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think you kind of have to fractionalize it. Um, to, to make that happen. But, you know, I think that's a use case that could be pretty big, right? Fractionalizing NFTs as super tokens and then giving 
you know, giving uh, people the ability to do interesting superfood related things with portions of that NFT. Anybody else have anything to add on that? Sure. Um, yeah. So, so on that, uh, it seems like, you know, fractionalizing is really just going to be um, the best way to do that. So I, I guess in theory, what you could do is fractionalize as fractional.art, right? And then you get an ERC-20 and then uh, you should be able to upgrade that. But uh, for this hackathon, I'm actually going to be setting it up where um, you can fractionalize directly into a super token. Um, and so the, it, this is just going to be like a very bare bones minimum kind of thing uh, since the hackathon's like two days. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm thinking like just as a general idea here is like making it as as minimal as possible and, and kind of modular for other projects, right? So like the fractionalizing is just the first step. There's a lot of stuff you can do beyond this, right? Like there's the... Um, the Rick's proposal by, uh, who was it? Um, so somebody basically put, what's that? Paradigm. Paradigm, yeah. So yeah, so, so Paradigm kind of put out this idea of, um, you know, like a, a re reconstitution kind of thing where, where you basically you can get back the whole NFT even after it's been fractionalized. Um, that, that's one option. There's also options with things like governance, uh, just rewarding the community with things like IDAs of the fractional NFT, stuff like that. So um, again, you know, if, if anybody is interested in this kind of thing, I'm going to be doing that uh, this this weekend and beyond that. I'd love to work on stuff, you know, with people on that that topic. Awesome. And just put out a, a poll there last minute. Um, forgot to do it earlier, but just on the topic of people who would be interested in donating to charities with Superfluid Streams. So, so far. Um, yeah, the results are still coming in, but an overwhelming 75% saying yes um, and 20% saying maybe. So yeah, that's that's pretty awesome to see. Yeah, there's someone else building a donation application at the NFT hack as well, uh, where they will allow people to donate to people in, uh, um, in Malaysia, actually, where there was recently some sort of earthquake. So they bootstrapped this platform for the earthquake and then decided to add uh, crypto and they were looking for recurring donations and uh, they found Superfluid. So I think they'll be adding that during the hackathon. Uh, Sam and I were talking to them the other day. So I think donations are going to be a big focus this year. And hopefully even for those uh, who aren't lucky enough to get paid every second, their salaries, there's still a use case where you can, uh, you know, use Superfluid for a recurring donation to a cause you believe in. Uh, Thomas? Uh, yeah, I'm coming back to fractionalizing uh, NFTs um, because we are currently implementing NFT support in the Minerva wallet, uh, and we so far we were mainly focused on uh, ERC721, but now we are also integrating 1155. And I just learned myself uh, that basically every ID in a 1155 can be basically having uh, um, fractions. So basically you can define decimals uh, as you like. And I was wondering how far away that would be from fractionalized or using a ID for a particular NFT or 1155 uh, token and fractionalize it. I mean, technically no clue, but you guys maybe have an answer for that. It's a uh, it, it's a tough one with with ERC eleven fifty five because it's like a multi token kind of thing, right? So like I, obviously you can't just wrap it the same way you would with an ERC twenty because there's an ID associated with it. Um, so I I don't know I I don't, I don't think it's something that you could upgrade into a super token. I think it would need to be a sort of fractionalization similar to like the one that I'm doing is just ERC seven twenty one because it's a lot easier. Um, but I wonder, I don't know, maybe if you could like restrict the supply, right? So maybe if there was like, you have an ERC 1155 and as long as there's only one with that given token ID, then maybe you could fractionalize it. Otherwise it gets really tough, right? Like you're, you're fractionalizing this exact one of this exact token ID on this exact contract. It gets, it gets pretty deep there. So. Um, I, I'd love to continue the conversation on this, though, because I'm kind of wondering how can we do this 1155, you know, super fluid thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the other thought I had with 1155, that news about de decimals is new to me, but I kind of thought depending on the 
what the 1155 is for if it's kind of like an accessory you could stream multiple like you know swords or you know gold coins or if it's part of a game you could stream but you're streaming more than one uh whereas with the 721 it's a single token so well it makes it hard to scream i just learned the other day that basically in 1155 every id can have uh decimals or not so you can have um, you can define every decimal, uh, every ID um, different. By the way, are you uh, in the Discord server, or how, how can I reach out to you so we can continue this conversation? Because uh, <laughs> we could we could go pretty far down this rabbit hole, but I'd we, love to we, explore we, it. We can we can uh, yeah. I'm in, in Discord, and we also have a combined channel with Left Hand. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Um, I just wanted to, to say really quickly that the poll for the sticker design contest is closed. So thanks so much to everyone who not only participated on such short notice um, because it, it was a really tight timeline, but also everyone who voted. Um, we got tons of votes, I think, um, well over 100 votes. And it seems that sticker C, Stavchenko, was by far the, the winner there with 35.8% of the vote. And then the next most popular one, uh, and I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation, was Soliqui. Um, so that is sticker design number D. And that was 28.4%. So well done. It was still pretty close. Uh, Annette's was 20.9%. And Freelancing Co. 7's was about 15%. So um, yeah, well done to everyone. We're looking forward to printing hundreds of C and D stickers. So we'll be sharing those and just flooding the venue at uh, Ethereum Denver in February. So thanks so much again to everyone who participated. Yeah, uh, one, one other thing I'll say is uh, if any of the stimulating conversation around fractionalizing NFTs or streaming around NFTs is interesting to you and you have developer skills, you, you've tinkered with Solidity and Remix or something, or if you're a designer or creator, you should really consider participating in NFT Hack this weekend. Um, and if you're thinking about doing it, hit me up in Discord and I can help you find an idea and even teammates. So just wanted to plug this weekend's hackathon. It's just a weekend. And uh, in the future, if you're also interested in participating in a future event, you should either uh, participate in ETH Denver's virtual portion of their hackathon or come meet us in person there. Um, it'd be great to see you and we'll get you some stickers. So just wanted to say that. Awesome. We're just running a little bit over here now, but uh, yeah, if, if anyone has any closing thoughts they want to share um, or anything, of course, conversation is going to keep going on in our Discord. So uh, please, please join in there if you haven't already, and uh, we can dive into some of these topics a little bit, a little bit deeper. All right, looks like, um, looks like that's pretty much everything. Thanks so much to everyone for joining today. This was, like Fran mentioned, our biggest call yet. And it looks like we're gonna have to expand um, you know, our Zoom license or find another venue because there's some more people that wanted to join throughout the call, but uh, we were pretty, pretty full there with the 100. So thanks so much, everyone. As always, join us in the Discord and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you at the next call. See you All guys. Right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye, everyone. Bye.